I just got the brand new SH Engines PT21 XB1 and I need to break it in. I built this engine test stand a few years ago and it's largely still a work in progress. I've done my best to keep it as simple as possible and add minor improvements as I see them. I built it using as many off the shelf parts as possible. I have also kept the machine parts as simple as possible. One key feature is the waste bucket. It virtually eliminates all mess and it significantly decreases how noisy the uh, engine is when you're breaking it in. An airplane starter makes starting a new engine much easier than using your starter box. I bought this FreeSky radio to control the test stand. It's very programmable and customizable. I set it up so you can use a selector switch to control how you are controlling the servo. In the middle position, the traditional throttle controls the servo. This allows me to just set the throttle at any given position. The lower selector switch position makes it so the elevator controls the throttle. The advantage to this is so that you can flip the throttle on and off to adjust the low speed needle. The top position of the selector switch puts a test stand in throttle pumping mode and the rotary dial adjusts how much throttle you get when the throttle pumps on and off. This allows you to very precisely break in your engine and do it very automatically. So this is where you'll see that a airplane starter really, really shines. <clears throat> the motors in your starter box are kind of pissy, and then the amount of surface area contact that you have between the flywheel and your starter wheel really isn't that much. And, you know, starting a brand new engine that has a bunch of pinch, particularly like an SH engine, is really, really hard on them. Whereas an airplane starter, you've got tons of surface area contact between the nose cone and the inside of the, the little starter rubber thingy. And then the starter motor is designed to start, you know, like, you know, 60 sized aircraft engines. So, you know, a little 21 engine with a bit of pinch, I mean, it doesn't even hardly know it. And so it just makes starting them, you know, so much unbelievably easier. So one huge thing I like about using this, um, this test stand over, you know, say, putting it in a buggy is the first couple tanks of fuel take like 45, 50 minutes to run through. And if you're like driving your car in circles for 40 or 50 minutes, I mean, it's kind of boring and takes forever. Whereas um, with this test stand and the pumping function of the transmitter, you just get it started. And I set it to the first few tanks of fuel. I do about a 20% pumping or, you know, 20% of full throttle. And then you just kind of sit back and just let it do it. Um, and then you know, as you get more tanks of fuel in the engine or through it, rather, um, I start increasing the amount of throttle that it gives it while it's pumping. Another nice thing is <clears throat> because the um, propeller and has so much mass to it, it acts like a gigantic flywheel. Whereas when an engine is tight and brand new and you're just breaking it in, you know, the flywheel really doesn't have enough momentum to help keep it running. So, you know, your car dies and you got to walk after it and restart it. What's nice about using um, this test stand with a full size propeller on it is that it, um, the, the engine doesn't hardly die on you. You know, once it gets running, you know, it stays running. On an SH engine, I actually don't mess with the needles at all during the break-in process. I usually, not until I put it in the car and I'm trying to put a, a race tune on it, do I actually um, adjust them at all. Here you can see the little hose clamp thing that I installed on the exhaust, and this actually works really, really slick for uh, killing the engine.